Hi, today on Full Metal American, I'm going to be shooting my arquebus. Now, these were used in the 16th and 17th centuries uh, by multiple nations across Europe and around the world, and it's a match lock device. So you open and load and prime here. I'm going to put a piece of burning match cord in here, and we're going to get it shooting. All right, so when you're loading these, and I'm going to do it a bit different today to be safer, because I don't want to load uh, a musket or an arquebus with a burning match in it yet. So they would carry their powder in something called an apostle. And the reason they call it an apostle, and it's pretty much just a little piece of wood like this, and I'll do some zoomed up photos of it here in between the clip, that holds your gunpowder. And the reason they call it an apostle is because you carry a bandolier and you carry 12 of them across your chest, like the 12 apostles. So start out with loading our powder. And I'm using 50 grains of 3F, um, which should be plenty for, for what we're doing today. All right, so the next part, I'm going to load a ball. And this is a 62 caliber ball. And it's a .60 ball. I'm going to use some wadding wafers, just because I think that works the best. So stick that down. Remember, we've already got our powder in there. Then the ball. Then the top wafer. And this particular musket is from Veteran Arms, and a lot of their stuff's pretty good, but the scouring rod that came with it is pretty weak. You can see that it already broke. So I got my own heavy duty one here that I'm using. So what I've got here is a pair of piece of match cord. Usually you use a long spool but I'm just using short pieces because I like to be able to remove it in between shots while I'm reloading just for safety since we have other people around. As you can see it's holding an ember and it's glowing and that's because this is 100% hemp cord that I soaked in water mixed with gunpowder. And then you hang it up and let it dry and this way it will burn and you can blow on it and get it to glow. So what you do is you place that in the jaws here and this can be a little tricky sometimes. Alright, so I had to swap out my mask cord because that other cord was too thick for the jaws on this, uh, this particular arquebus. So we're going to take our first shot here at a target down there. We just got a jug of uh, old expired tea down there. So you open your pan to expose the powder. And I'll try to hit it, this thing's not very accurate. <laughs> Looks like we got a hit there. You got a hit. <laughs> Here, I'm going to go right down. Oh. It blew the string right <laughs> Where do we hit it at? Right on the lower part. Right at the bottom end. Wow, it flipped that board right the fuck <laughs> So yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to get hit with a 62 caliber lead ball. Alright, so for the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to try some birdshot out of this. Never tried it before. So, load it up with powder already. Start with our wadding. Put our little wafer on top, a little cardboard wafer. And we'll ram it home. All right.
pack quite a wallop. You hit it, my lord. Now, for those of you that don't know, a 62 caliber is about the same as a 20 gauge. So that packs about as much heat as probably like a 3 inch 20 gauge shotgun shell. So, pretty good amount of wallop there. And like always, I'm going to take one more shot. I'm going to give it to you guys in slow-mo because I know you guys like that stuff. So as you can see, we actually got a pretty good shot grouping on that. That's pretty tight for just a regular full, you know, open without a choke, you know, like you would have on a modern shotgun. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Go. I think I hit it. <laughs> I can't tell. I ain't blowing up, it should have. Yeah, I think there's a big hole in the bottom. Alright, so when you look at this, you probably think. Well, that doesn't really look like any musket I've seen before. Now, an arquebus like this, or a matchlock arquebus, um, ones like this started to come around in the mid-16th century, so the mid-1500s. Before that, they had more primitive ones that weren't spring-loaded, like this. They were just a serpentine that you basically just metal rod with a, with a uh, match cord on it that you just kind of pushed into the place. Now, you'll notice that this still, in its shape and in its mechanism, and the lever retains a lot of things from the crossbow because the crossbow was still a dominant weapon at the time when this was developed so this kind of came in and started to replace that and why would you want something like this over a crossbow or a longbow um, simpler to use it doesn't require a great deal of physical strength to operate you could train someone up a peasant or a levy really quickly with this and it could pierce armor you know, a knight in full plate armor could be slain by a peasant armed with an arquebus. So that was the big advantage with this, and that's why it became so prominent when it did. Now as far as my getup, like what I'm wearing, I've just got some basic clothes from the 16th century on. I've got up on my top, I've got a Morian helmet. This one's just mild steel, pretty much like they would have been. Some of the better ones might have been a higher quality of steel. Um, I'm kind of got some mix match of stuff. I didn't exactly have a perfect outfit for this time period, but all the stuff I have would have been around during that time, including the shoes and the footwear. I've got a Scottish dirk here, which would have been a pretty common weapon for people in Scotland and Northern England. And no doubt some of the colonists coming through the New World at Jamestown and other places and uh, would have had them as well, but the arquebus was used by pretty much all of the early explorers, whether it was Francis Drake or Cortez and the Conquistadors. So uh, it's been nice bringing this out today and finally getting to shoot it. This again was made by Veteran Arms. I'll put a link down in the description for you if you're interested in purchasing their firearms. They make a bunch of different uh, historical firearms from many different periods, but. Uh, I highly recommend going out and getting one of these yourself and having some fun with it. They're not that expensive, and you, too, could become a conquistador today. Yeah. Well. Well.